Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Do We Know Them, episode 126. I need to go shopping again. I've officially started the wheel of repeating shirts. Just now? Well, no, it actually started, I think, last episode. I was like, fuck, or like two episodes ago. Whenever I wore that Dolly Parton t-shirt, that was when the wheel restarted. See, I don't feel like yours are necessarily as obvious. Like mine will be like- The Rolling Stones one. I know that one with the animal print. That one I haven't even actually worn that much. Oh, I think we've only worn I that like- so much? I've, I've tried not to wear anything more than like twice, but there's a couple that are just like really comfy and I'm like, mm, who cares? I've definitely worn things like five times on the show. Well, aside from like solid colored things, but I feel like I usually, Otherwise, oh. I have a lot of graphic tees now, so I switched it up. I have worn this before, but it's really comfy too. And whatever, I don't care. I'm not fit repeater. Oh, I definitely, I mean, I've never understood people that aren't. I'm like, so you just buy new clothes no. every no. time? At you least change? I feel like for me, I have different hair now from when I wore everything the first time. So maybe it just like seems different. Girlies, I wore my hair down for you. She did. It wasn't for me. It takes so long for me to do it. I feel like I used to be able to do it really fast. And I don't know if I just have more hair now because it's not all dead, but it took me like an hour. Yeah. When you told me it took you an hour, I'm like, Lily, you don't even have hair. It's short, but there's a lot. Oh my goodness. Well, today's episode is a fucking weird one because we're not only getting, would you say conspiratorial? Yes. maybe a little bit. For the purposes of not being demonetized, we'll say no. What's another word we could use? We're conducting a bit of an investigation. <laughs> and then yeah. the other thing is annoying, gonna piss you off. It's something we have to talk about, but it's like- Would you say annoying or would you say infuriating and like fill you with rage? Yes, but this person looking at her annoys me. Yes, okay. So that's no, why I think I said valid. that. Yeah. Also, I broke a nail. So, you know, today's gonna be a day. That's all I gotta say. But we're here, you know, we're gonna work through it. Oh my gosh, okay, well, should we just start? Lily, I'm nervous. You said you made an official Google Doc, which in my eyes, I'm thinking a three pager. Well, there's pictures, <laughs> so like those take up a lot of room. I could I could have made them small, but yeah, I, I don't know. Text wise, I think it's like one or two pages. It's not a ton and I don't, okay. So I wanna put out a disclaimer right now that we're about to talk about Kate Middleton and the Royals yes. and everything going on right now. If you don't know what's going on, then what rock have you been living under? The reason I have dove into it is because first of all, People have been suggesting it, even like on our Reddit, to cover it for at least a few weeks mm -hmm. now. Up until literally, I guess it was the 10th when the infamous Photoshop photo came out, I like couldn't be bothered. I really didn't care at all. And my disclaimer was gonna be, my royal family like lore knowledge is very minimal. I'm not someone that really follows them or is like really invested in the royal family. I just don't really get it. You're not either. No, I did get interested in the like Princess Diana aspect of it. But other than that, do I care about a bunch of like, aren't they all like, oh God, let me not, aren't they all like, <laughs> <laughs> like don't they marry like cousins and stuff? No. It's like a classy Alabama? No. Okay, uh, just kidding. I don't really know. Like to keep the bloodline pure, you know? Oh, yeah, you might be right. But in this case, Kate Middleton obviously married into the family. And right, yeah. that actually brings up a lot of stuff about Diana because she very much like basically was like living in hell and like hated being yeah. married to Charles and everything. And I actually f didn't remember. They did get divorced, which is usually frowned upon. People have like, there can, is there another word I can say besides... There are investigations. Theories, theories, I think we could say. There are theories a lot of theories. That her car accident was not so much an accident. I mean, even- By theories, do you mean concrete facts? Because that's what I think. Well, because even if it was just an accident, it was because of like paparazzi chasing the car. But people think it's like more than that. Yeah. And that she was like- The reason why Diana got treated so poorly is because she pretty much refused to conform to the royals like absolute insane behaviors that they require of you. Like they don't want you to fully be human. And we're gonna see that when we're talking about like what's going on with Kate Middleton because they're so secretive. They're so like vague and weird and mysterious and, and they like it that way. That's how they want it. Oh, super controlling. Like of like, the narrative and of the people. Yeah, you are never allowed. If you are in the royal family or adjacent to it or whatever the fuck, you are not allowed to exist as a normal human being. You need to be a royal. And there is like classes they take for that and shit. It's like Prince Princess Diaries. But Diana went to those classes and said, fuck you. And she just kept being herself, which was very endearing and sweet and amazing. And that's why and look what they her. did to her for it. One of my favorite clips of her is when she uh, does the foot race for the like mother. Oh yeah, day. yeah, I've oh, seen that. It.
Oh my gosh. And you could just see, especially, I mean, not that William didn't adore her, but like Harry was like obsessed with his mom. Then that uh, parlays into the whole like Harry Meghan thing, which also, honestly, I didn't follow that super closely, but I know that they basically like left the royal family because they didn't like how Meghan was being treated. Well, beyond that, yeah, the racism that they experienced, um, he didn't say flat out that it was his dad, but everyone is like, it was your dad, um, that he said approached him and was like, basically, is your baby going to come out dark? Yeah. They dealt with a lot of horrendous shit to the point that Megan got pretty much to the brink of like no return. And so he literally has said in interviews, I saw what they did to my mom and I wasn't going to let that happen to my wife. And so he got the fuck out. He's living in the United States or Canada. Where is he living? I'm pretty sure they live in Santa Barbara. Oh my God. What a sleigh. They had to actually stay with friends. I forgot who it was exactly that they stayed with, but it was definitely someone super random. Not like if it would have been like DJ Khaled random, but it was on that spectrum. No, wasn't it like Tyler Perry or Someone something? so random that I was like, oh, interesting mix. Yeah. But Megan is in the film industry, so it kind of does make sense. But literally, he left all that money and shit behind that he was getting from being in the royal family. And he's like, no, fuck that. I don't want anything and to do with you. And they took away their security. That is so royal family coded. Like think of presidents. Presidents get secret service like for the rest of their lives. Yeah, but the royal family has always been like that where it's like you get all of this as long, you know what I mean? And then if you There's don't- conditions. Oh, huge conditions. And they're really, really hard to abide by. Yeah. So Kate Middleton was much more willing than Princess Diana or even Meghan, even though Meghan was very, very classy and like she, you know, fit in well. I'm not saying she did it. Yeah. But Kate was much more willing to fit that mold. And so she was far more accepted mm -hmm. in the public and not to mention she's a white woman. So she was far more accepted in that regard. And it just is a really fucked up weird situation. But the reason why we're talking about any of this, because honestly, we're not trying to get a hit on us. Girl, what are we getting into? Like, I'm scared. They have a lot of other targets to deal with before they're Lily was to telling us, me how but... much her tweet was popping off. I was like, oh my God, girl, you better, you better watch out. The funniest part to me was that literally up until this photo situation, which we're about to go over, I even, I think, responded to someone else's tweet that tweeted me to cover this. And I was like, I know she hasn't been seen in a while, but like, I don't get it. What, like, why is this such a big deal? Right? And I was, I kind of like wrote it off and just didn't really care. Then this picture came out. If Photoshop's and, involved, Lily's there. Well, yeah, I was like, this is my time <laughs> to shine. The amount of people that I know personally, but haven't spoken to in like years were responding to my uh, Instagram stories. Oh, it wow. was so funny. So many people were like, so what do you think is the theory? And I go, oh, I don't know. I just know the pictures. For this. <laughs> well, okay. So I don't keep up with the royal family. Despite knowing like little bits and pieces, I do not keep up with them. What I did know because I edit my mom's podcast is that she said on there like, I don't know, weeks ago, she was like, Kate Middleton got a surgery and they didn't say anything until it was like basically done. And they were just like, she got this abdominal surgery, which I think people speculate was like a hysterectomy. And that's all I had heard. And now Everyone's like, she's missing. And I'm like, wait, what? We'll get to the picture, but do you want to go through a timeline first to- Definitely, yeah. Let's set the stage for why the picture is such a big deal. December 25th, Christmas, is the last time anyone has seen her out publicly, aside from a few photos we'll get to, but like potentially not her, potentially altered. We'll get to that. So um, Christmas, that is the last time anyone has seen her out like- normal without there being any like suspicion around her. So that was when they attended the uh, royal family's annual church service at Sandring Sandringham. I'm going to pronounce things wrong probably. Say it in a British accent maybe then it'll be easier. Sandringham. <laughs> Oh, I didn't think you were going to go for that, period. The Scottish was off limits. <laughs> British, at least, I can kind of pretend. This all, by the way, is, um, it's not necessarily all of the text, but I took this timeline from a Vogue that came out with an article like two hours ago. Shout out Vogue. It says, everything seemed picture perfect as she held hands with her children. There has, up until then, though, been speculation that maybe there's a little trouble in paradise with her and Will. There's not, like, any, obviously, concrete evidence of that, but it's been circulating for a while that they're not necessarily happy. But it says she was holding hands with her children. And everyone seemed happy. Okay. So then January 17th, the Kensington Palace announces that Kate Middleton got this abdominal surgery. I was talking to um, Jill, our old producer, Clever. She's a big royal family enthusiast because I was like trying to get like some of the background details. And I was like, abdominal surgery is so vague and random. Like what would that even apply to? When I saw that, I thought either hernia because a lot of times when a woman gives birth, they'll have like a separated abdominal muscles. So I thought either that, but... If it was serious enough that they needed to mention it, then I was like, could they have gone hysterectomy and just like labeled it abdominal surgery? I did see something that said like most abdominal surgeries, the recovery or at least being in the hospital wouldn't be more than like a week 
tops, like probably less. And she was in the hospital for two weeks. Oh my God. Wait, really? And it says that it was a planned abdominal surgery. It wasn't like she had like appendicitis and got her appendix out, which that definitely wouldn't be two weeks. Even if you had a hysterectomy, I shit you not, you'd probably be out of the hospital in about 48 to 72 hours unless something went wrong. Or again, uh, this is coming from like a middle class citizen. I don't know how much time rich people spend in the hospital. You got two weeks or two weeks for me would probably bankrupt me. So I don't know. Yeah, but it's like if she didn't have to, why wouldn't they like make her comfortable at home? And well, and what my mom was saying and is so true is like you really don't hear from them until shit is so fucking bad. Like if it was a planned surgery that like she just recovered from went home. I don't even know that we would have heard of that. My biggest question was like, what are even the options here? Like what other kind of abdominal surgeries are there? And if it was, for example, his <laughs> She got like ab implants. We're like, oh. Have you not heard that people have joked about her getting a BBL? <laughs> okay, yes, I have seen that. But this is not a I'm laughing like, matter, you absolute rats. <laughs> no, and then I actually have also seen um, people, and I don't know if they're serious, but that she got some kind of like plastic surgery, like mommy makeover kind of situation. Okay, again, I feel like if she did that, they wouldn't even mention it. Because again, even plastic surgery, as very intense as it is and invasive as it is, you're not in the most hospital things in a week or two weeks, you're fine. Like yeah. you can probably even go out in public. Like you'll be bruised and a little sore or whatever. But the recovery for two weeks, that's like ICU level recovery. I don't, I don't understand that. Well, so then further than that, she's in the hospital for two weeks, but they, during their announcement, say that due to medical advice, she would not return to public duties until after Easter. Wait, that happened in January? Yeah, so almost a full three months. Oh, fuck no. That's weird. Jill said even that like in January when she heard that, she was like, Easter? Like, shit. Okay. Mm -hmm. So then the same day, apparently, is when Buckingham Palace announces that King Charles is seeking treatment for an enlarged prostate. It says the difference between the two household statements is noticeable with Charles being much more specific about his condition. Oh my God, I'm dying. My mom just texted me. <laughs> What'd she say? You're gonna die. Oh my God, Ken and I eat olives every day. <laughs> you? I told you, your own mother eats olives every day, you absolute toddler. She did it, you to. She said, Tasso's stuffed giant Greek olive stuffed with garlic and jalapenos. Ooh. Costco sourced. <laughs> we love you, Mama Marston. Thank you so much for weighing in. And just, you know, next time you see your daughter, shove an olive in her mouth for all of us. You know, we would very much so appreciate it. Oh my God, I hate you all. Um, <laughs> anyway, back to, <laughs> back to the royal family. This is how we do conspiracy theories on this podcast. <laughs> Also, if you guys didn't know, because I literally did not know this, her name is not Kate Middleton, it's Catherine Middleton. I had no fucking clue. Which will come into play later because she signed something C and Jesse was like, who is C? I thought it was like in Pretty Little Liars when it's like, love A, and you're like, oh my God. So the king just announced that he has the enlarged prostate and then January 29th, which is 12 days after her surgery, she returns home from the hospital. But it's important to note that she was not photographed during her return. So no one saw her leave the hospital. They were just told that, I guess. It was said what hospital she was at, right? I believe so. Yeah, London Clinic. They even know where she got the surgery. Yeah, so like, wouldn't you think that there would be like literally people just camped out there all the time? Yeah, you're gonna tell me they didn't catch a photo of her or even at the very least a vehicle carrying her? Get out of here, no. So one of the reasons that people claim that that is the case, which this is not true. <laughs> But it's because she, I guess, um, requested privacy during her recovery. I'm like, Since well, and when? I request a trillion dollars, but you don't really get that. <laughs> That's stupid to me. I'm like, Okay, well, since when has that been a thing that people well, respect? Well, I don't know if this is legit, but when I watched The Queen, you know, the series on Netflix, it did show that Queen Elizabeth, the paparazzi, did, like they had a relationship where she <laughs> could tell them like, hey, please, no. And they would like literally delete the stuff off of their camera. I don't know if that's true, oh. but I think that the royals do have quite a bit of control Over the of press. the press. Yeah, like the, they kind of give them like, you want this, then give us this type of thing. So it could have been that they told them, uh-uh, you're not photographing her. Which I believe, or they could have been like, don't ask questions why there is no opportunity to photograph her. Right, yeah, <laughs> no, yeah, one or the other. Like they are very much controlling of everything that happens there. Then February 5th, uh, King Charles announces that it's not an enlarged prostate. Uh, well, I guess maybe he had that, but then also while they were there, found out that he had cancer. 
So he announces his cancer diagnosis. He says he's super positive about treatment and looks forward to returning to full public duty as soon as possible. In the time since, Charles has continued to make the occasional appearance, such as meeting ambassadors from Algeria, and I can't even say Hey, that's that. where my husband's from. So he's met people at the Buckingham Palace. He's put out a couple other statements. They've been, like, keeping people updated on his progress. So okay. a very stark difference between how... Kate's has been handled. And I know that Harry even came out for one day and then left and we don't know if he was sent away or if he just like came for a day and then left. I don't know. That's where knowledge of the lore would uh, come in handy, but I just don't They know do that. have a very complicated relationship and he was reported to have met with his dad when he went. Like he wasn't like yeah. forbidden from meeting with his dad, yeah, but yeah, then yeah. he left very quickly. Then February 27th, so like a uh, little over two weeks ago, Prince William pulls out of a memorial service for his godfather with Kate despite the abdominal surgery being like planned she has had to like cancel certain things because apparently they didn't cancel ahead of time even though it was planned which is interesting but um Prince William was supposed to still be going to stuff and he ends up not going to this memorial service for his godfather and says that it's due to personal reasons but like keeps it super vague and then an anonymous royal source told news outlets like CNN that there was no connection between the cancellation and the princess's health but speculation was obviously running rampant anyway because he pulls out of that that's where all of the investigative theories <laughs> really start like coming out and it turns into a full-fledged social media moment as rumors began to swirl about the princess's whereabouts because still at this point, no one has seen her since Christmas. How often was she seen before, I wonder? I think like relatively Probably. often. Obviously, she's not like going to the grocery store and stuff and getting photographed. But, right, like, right. I think she's going to events enough. Yeah, it's weird sure. that like, because usually when something goes wrong, like they will make statements about it. So the fact that she has just like, they're not showing her at all is I think the more suspicious part. Two days after that, that's when the Kensington Palace reiterates its original statement which is, we were very clear from the onset that the Princess of Wales was out until after Easter and Kensington Palace would only be providing updates when something was significant. They also added that the princess was doing well. So it's like, take our word for it. She's fine. Leave us alone. I feel like that's what a lot of people, like even I, a lot of people were mad responding to my Twitter thread and other people speculating because they're like, she just needs privacy. Leave her alone while she heals. And it's like, yeah, but that's a lot of privacy for a long time. Like, there's just weird circumstances around it. I think, too, it's like we're in the day and age where if shit is posted to the internet, people are going to analyze it, especially if it has something to do with the royal family. It's kind of like with Britney, when everyone thought everyone was crazy for the Free Britney movement, then it ended up being true. Like, where there's smoke, there's fire. If we see something suspicious and we say it, it's not to be, like, spreading wild shit. Because i that's my thing with conspiracies. I'm like, okay, there could be something that you think is smoke, but it's not smoke. It's a mirage. You know what I mean? Things like that. I don't think that's the case here. Well, and uh, first of all, I think a lot of people are acting out of like concern that it's not just like right. to like, For sure. I mean, I'm sure other people are just doing it because it's like something to talk about. But I think a lot of people are just like, hey, this is weird. Like, why are you not telling yeah. us? And that's the thing is with technology, like how hard would it be for them to prove that she's fine? But instead it seems as if they're like going out of their way to do the opposite. So then March 4th, which is just a week ago, paparazzi capture the Princess of Wales driving around Windsor. Is she allowed to drive? Because I know the presidents. She's not, she's not driving. Oh, uh, okay. No, because I know that presidents and stuff aren't allowed to drive here. Well, she is photographed driving with her mom. Oh, I'm going to need you to zoom into that. My astigmatism's kicking in. Well, and we're going to need to because I might have to look for another version too. But um, so March 4th, paparazzi catch her and it's TMZ that published this grainy paparazzi photo of the princess and her mother driving an Audi around the Windsor Castle. It says the British press refrained from sharing the images due to the princess's privacy. So keep that in mind. People start zooming in and they're like, that's Kate Middleton? Her face does look not like it normally does necessarily. <laughs> I mean, my face doesn't look like it normally does when I go to like the grocery store. So people are saying that her face shape is different than it normally is. People don't think it's her. I could see that being her. You can't, really? I can. I don't think it's like the most unheard of thing. Like, but... think about it right now, Lily. If someone compared our podcast to a picture of us <laughs> on a haggard day driving, we would be horrified. Like, if I go missing, do not look for podcast version of Jesse. I beg you because you will not find me. Another thing that they point out is one that it kind of looks like her sister, but also I asked Jill, I was like, if it was her sister, why would her sister and her mom be in on like covering up where she is? I think that's her. I don't even think there's really much debate there. 
Oh, hi there. Just chiming in because um, when I was editing, I may have taken a much closer look. Uh, actually, basically, I was trying to find pictures to show that that doesn't look like her, but all I could find were pictures to show that it does. And then also, I had seen this Twitter thread where it was pointing out that she didn't have a mole in this one, which she has a very prominent mole. But the picture that they were using to show that she didn't have the mole was an AI enhanced picture. So it like generates the extra pixels. And because it was so grainy, it didn't pick up the mole, but it's definitely not the actual picture, which I actually put in Photoshop and adjusted the lighting a little. And the more I looked at it, the more I could tell that there absolutely is a mole there. So anyway, I take back any speculation uh, that I put forth for this picture. I hadn't had time to really inspect it yet. But again, upon further reflection, I think this is definitely her unless she has a really good doppelganger. So anyway, back to us. I think that a lot of people also thought it was weird that the British press wouldn't publish it. I don't think that's weird at all. Again, with the history of Queen Elizabeth, they have a very, very strong relationship with them. Like normally I understand that, but I feel like given the fact that there have been just like rampant conspiracy theories about it. Well, I think even more so because of that they would be like, hey, if we've ever needed a favor from you, this is fucking it. You cannot show her. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like that would make more sense. I don't fucking know. I just think that looks like a picture of Kate Middleton. I might be crazy and I do have astigmatism, but that's what I think. Basically, people are not satisfied with this. So this was not like, Kate is fine, everyone has seen her. A lot of people were still feeling suspicious about it. The other aspect of the picture, which I can't really speak to because it could be like an optical illusion. Do you see that there are potentially, people are saying that there's more tires in the background that shouldn't be? You mean the tree? So that's what someone else said. And it was like, that's a tree. But when you look next to it, it is like the exact same kind of thing as the tire. It's just a little blurrier. But I think easily it could be a tree that is just like- Well, it lines up with the branches sometimes. right there on the top. I'm not here to be like that, absolutely. I can't, I'm not confident about that. But there's no car behind them. Like that couldn't be from another car. It's either a tree or the worst Photoshopping ever. I think it's a tree, but yeah. Okay, I got it. People are suspicious. Next though. Oh God. Here we go. People get very suspicious. And this is where I entered the chat. March 10th, from the official Prince and Princess of Wales Twitter, they tweet, thank you for your kind wishes and continued support over the last two months. Wishing everyone a happy Mother's Day, C. And then it has picture credit, Prince of Wales 2024. Who's the Prince of Wales? William. <laughs> William. Is William a tripod? Because she doesn't want to talk to him anymore because that's my theory. But my thing is, Mother's Day? It's not yet. UK Mother's Day is. Oh, okay. Got it. Because I was like, I missed it. Fuck my husband. Why didn't he tell me? <laughs> no, I think a few years ago, I kept seeing people from the UK saying Happy Mother's Day and I forget things all the time. So I, just, I was oh, like, oh holy God. shit, I'm so sorry. I forgot Mother's Day. And she's like, it's March. <laughs> what are you talking about? But um, no, so it was Mother's Day in the UK on Sunday. Okay, got it. Okay, so this is the picture. Albeit Lily sent me it when I was a little sleepy and I just looked at her and I was, I was like, Lily, what the fuck? I don't see anything wrong. So upon first glance, do you think it looks off Completely normal to me. And I'm not even joking. And even after you pointed out things to me, I still don't remember where they are and I don't see them. <laughs> just looking at it, I don't think I would have been like, that's Photoshopped. Like, cause I wouldn't have really paid it too much attention to begin with. I also want to point out, people are saying that this was taken on Mother's Day, but they don't say that in the picture. They just say it was taken in 2024, but it's supposed to be like the first official picture that has been released after her. Well, surgery. yeah, and the text very much indicates that. It's like, thank you so much basically for supporting me through this time. And if you read in between the lines, this is supposed to be the picture that's supposed to put everyone at ease. Like this is the the big like, hey, I'm alive and I'm good. But technically it does not say this was taken on Mother's Day. It's just a happy Mother's Day post and it happens to be the mother with three kids. Yes, but know? I'm saying like the thank you for your kind wishes and continued support from the last months is very much like, thank you for giving me the time during my healing journey. I'm here and I'm good. That's what that post says to me. And then people are like, wait a but second. But I think it does it in a way that could be omitting information on purpose mm -hmm. where it's like, we're gonna allude to it being on Mother's Day, but we're not gonna say that because if they find out that it wasn't, we're gonna be like, no, 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 that was just from like early January. Right, yeah. I don't think I would have thought anything about this picture. I am looking at it now, like 
I do think like she looks kind of out of place for some reason. And I wouldn't necessarily know exactly how I feel like I do now, but like her face is a little darker. The lighting doesn't seem the same, how they all have light on their cheeks and hers maybe could be kind of blocked by Charlotte, but at the same time, like they're outside. The lighting doesn't seem totally accurate. She just seems like a little more dull. Like they're all sharper than she is. And it just seems like maybe it didn't come from the same thing. Again, my astigmatism does not allow me to see that. So I appreciate you pointing that out because everyone looks blurry. That wasn't even one of my tweets in my thread. I just feel like looking at it now, she looks slightly more blurry than the three of them. Then Twitter starts going nuts. And I guess I must have seen it pretty early on. And then I looked at a couple threads that pointed it out. And I was like, oh, I mean, I haven't really cared about this, but I hear Photoshop. And it was not the 3.6 million views. I told you it went viral. I was only half paying attention, Lily. I'm scared. What happened? I inspired articles. Oh my gosh. She's famous. What are we going to do? Do we know them? I guess I do. Anyway, so let's go through this thread. I I'd seen people pointing out some things that I was like, no, that's just like, people are like, she's wearing different shoes or like one of them has a heel and the other doesn't, but it's like a tassel. It's like stuff that was very like, no, you're just not, that's not right. Because of that, then I started looking through the photos myself and I was like, well, let me just see what I noticed. And I said, okay, so some of the things I've seen people point out have explanations, but here are the issues I see so far that I personally feel are undeniably the result of sloppy photoshopping, in my opinion, allegedly. So first we have Charlotte's sleeve. And this is, in my opinion, one of the craziest ones because it's not even a question of whether it's edited. It's like, oh, who fucked that up? Okay, so do you see that her sweater sleeve just is missing a piece. And this is one of the perfect examples of like, yes, I guess it could have been another program, but Photoshop specifically, you can use, there's something called a clone stamp tool. So you can like stamp one part and put it somewhere else. So it would be like if you took the edge of it and then like faked the edge like further away or something. Yeah, well, you see where her bottom of her sleeve is still there and then it fades mm-hmm. out into what looks like clone stamp of her skirt. My question is, what is the purpose of something like that? Is her hand, like, why would you want to make a child's like arm smaller? Because it was to accommodate for, in my opinion, the hand. That is Kate Middleton's not, alleged hand. Yeah. So you'll notice as we go through these, all of these edits and like noticeable like problems are all surrounding where Kate is interacting with the kids in some way. One of the biggest things that I've seen, and I get, I was getting so annoyed because I'm like, no, that's clearly not the issue, is people are like, when you take pictures with kids, they're never like making the right face. They're like, you have to Photoshop a bunch of them mm-hmm. together to get the best option, which yeah, no shit. I that's fine. But then why are all of these edits not around the kids' faces? Like, yeah, sure, maybe they're photoshopping their hands or something, but it's not even really their hands. It's around where Kate is, not where no, they No, no, that makes no sense. I've heard of that a lot. I've never actually had it done with my kids. I usually just, um, you know, deal with whatever we get from the photo shoots. But I feel like the main thing they do is the faces because a kid's body, I mean, how much is it going to change? Are they going to flip you off and you can't have that and so you have to change it? Like, no. Well, that's what I said. I was like, well, also, if you look at the, like, overall picture, look how weird the kid's hands are. Like, they're, people point out they're all crossing their fingers. Their hands are all doing weird shit. So I was like, that's, those are the ones they chose. Right. But also like that one is not even one that was Photoshopped. Right. So it doesn't make sense. I also noticed, I didn't include this, but doesn't it seem like Charlotte's kind of sitting maybe a little like something feels a little unnatural about like how she's like holding her arms out. Like as if there was someone bigger. Potentially. There. Yeah. I was going to say my theory is maybe someone else was sitting there because I think the kids were all in the picture. I think that they swapped Kate in. Whether that also one theory is that maybe they swapped her in because she didn't like how she looked, which mm, I don't think they do that in such a dire situation where everyone's wondering where she is. And also, was it like she didn't like how she looked in that picture or like at that time? So they took a photo from another time to swap in because the other thing with the like taking the kids different faces, you don't do that with like vastly different angles or like you do that with pictures that are taken in like rapid succession so it's like you layer them all on top of each other there's a tool that helps you align all of them in photoshop and then you can align them and then like just erase certain parts so then the other picture is behind it and you match it all up that's not what's happening here Next is one of the craziest ones. And this is what started me thinking that they like definitely swapped her in. 
because I'm like, I can't even really see it that well in this lighting, but. Let me get my monocle out. My entire thread, I have like lines that point out what I'm talking about. And I have two pictures. One is without anything. And then one's with like the iPhone highlight mm -hmm. circling it or something. But essentially there's a line right here that is very much like her head was pasted on and then they forgot to blend it. Very clear line through her hair, through the jacket. And it also is right where the zipper of her jacket just like, Ends. Okay, right now I see a field of darkness, so I can't really comment on that, but you know, yeah, I believe you. It's hard to see on my monitor too right now, but uh, like on your phone or on your computer, it's very obvious. There's a section of her hair in the middle that's way sharper than the rest. Oh yeah, I could see it. Well, I could see the literal like line you're talking about, I think. Yeah. Like it's undeniable. It's not like, oh, that's a mess. Her like hair ends no, no. a little bit too soon exactly. on part. Yeah. Next, we go to, I think it's Louis is on the left. Ooh, her hand's so blurry. Yes. So again, that's in the same depth of like his sweater right next to it, where it's the same depth is very sharp. So all around it is sharp and just the sweater and her hand, like right around her hand, the sweater and her hand itself, very blurry. Yeah, that is really, it's it's not even just like a little bit blurry. It's super blurry. I don't know what the explanation would be aside from they photoshopped in either a different hand or a hand in general. Then this next one is crazy too. Another clone stamp situation. Look at this step. One of these lines is supposed to extend and it doesn't. But Kate doesn't interact there. So why would they have that? I don't know. This one is weird, but it's one of the other like obvious ones. It's yeah. like, well, that's clearly edited. I don't know why they edited that part, but they did. I got so annoyed because also a lot of people were like, like, it's AI. It's obviously AI. I don't think people know what AI is or like how it plays into like photos. I know like even you mentioned Britney Spears earlier. That's like one of the things everyone's like, oh, AI and deep fakes and blah, blah. So AI is notoriously bad at generating fingers and like appendages. Cut to Nicki Minaj's claw police. Literally. People saw this, saw that it looked a little strange and they're like, oh, it's definitely AI. I was like, no, this is a kit where he has like his fingers are weirdly crossed. And then this isn't like missing a finger. That's it's bent. Yeah. Like it's just bent backwards that's his knuckle so then next we have one that isn't as obvious but i thought it definitely looked weird it looks like her hair right here just like ends oh yeah if, it gets faded again they were like doing the stamp tool clone stamp tool and they like just like fucked up but again it's another point where it's interacting with where they would have had to insert her. I don't think they were editing Charlotte just to edit Charlotte. I think that they were doing it to blend in the other stuff and just did a really bad job. If I had to guess, maybe her hair like swooped into Kate and it is kind of hard to get hair just right in Photoshop because it's so yeah. like the tiniest hairs will, if you don't include them, they look all weird and choppy like a thumbnail. And so <laughs> I just feel like maybe that's what they were trying to do. I don't know. This not as damning because it could just be paint, but cause at first it was like, is that Photoshop completely? And I think you actually were like, looks just, just like a bad paint job. But at the same time, this does seem more in focus to me than this did, which shouldn't be the case because they're the same distance away. People did speculate that maybe they were trying to erase something that was in the reflection. This one I didn't really understand because this is the only one besides, I guess, the step that didn't really, I don't know what the purpose would have been and less maybe something was like peeking out from the person that was sitting there before, but it's around this knee and like part of Charlotte's leg. Do you see how it's like super blurry on the edges here? But not right here. Like it starts halfway down this little piece of skirt and then is super blurry. That reminds me of like when on iPhones you take a picture with portrait mode and it like kind of bleeds into the subject. But the reason that happens is because iPhone doesn't have the lens that's capable of getting that depth of field. Instead, it fakes it by taking two pictures and then combining them. So it takes a blurry one and it takes a clear one and then it puts the subject, like it cuts out the subject <gasps> and puts it on top of the blurry one. Oh my gosh, I didn't know that. But it doesn't always cut them out perfectly. So then it, sometimes it'll bleed into it because it just didn't do a great job cutting out because it wasn't super obvious it. for it. But that is literally impossible that that would happen with a DSLR camera, like with a real lens, because that's not how lenses work. Like right. there's no way that it would like, like it isn't gonna put this in focus and not this when they're the same distance away. So those were all the ones I noticed. In my opinion, I saw that, went through all these and was like, without a shadow of doubt, this is photoshopped. Like you can't say it's not. I then, again, did not go to sleep that night because I was editing all night. At like four in the morning, I see a tweet pop up on my timeline from the Kensington Palace that says, 
Like many amateur photographers, I do occasionally experiment with editing. I wanted to express my apologies for any confusion the family photograph we shared yesterday caused. I hope everyone celebrating had a very happy Mother's Day. C. Allegedly Catherine, right? Because I was confused with the C. Yes, and actually the last one, the Mother's Day one was signed C as well. So you're going to tell me that a royal family that is so dead set on controlling every aspect of everyone who's involved's life is just going to allow Catherine to play Photoshop and put up a picture when the public is already speculating on her whereabouts. That just makes no sense. That was my, I was like, I read this and I was like, what? You expect me to believe that Kate Middleton photoshopped this picture? And even this, I do occasionally experiment with editing. Someone that occasionally experiments with editing isn't like clone stamping, swapping out faces and trying to manipulate this picture like that. As someone who I would say I like experiment with editing and I've made like thumbnails and I can cut people out and do things like that. But my experimenting with editing is like lighting and stuff and like filters on like light coloring and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, coloring. I am not gonna experiment with replacing several aspects of a photo because it's gonna look like when shit. When there are also simultaneously all of these conspiracy theories about your whereabouts. That's didn't happen. I don't believe that for two seconds. I was like in a state of delirium at four in the morning. I was like, shut the fuck up. That's not, I thought it was a parody account. It's not, it's the real account. It's still there. Do you know what also is still there? The Photoshop picture. Like oh, it I is? took the screenshot right before we filmed. Wasn't there like a kill notice for that photo on all press? Yes, there was. So I saw Pop Base tweet out that multiple photo agencies such as AP and um, Reuters have pulled the new photo of Kate Middleton shared by Kensington Palace from circulation amid concerns that it was manipulated. So they put out a kill notice, which I guess is like unheard of. Like they don't do that. That has to be like a very, very egregious error for them to be like, hey, you're not allowed to run this photo and anything you have ran it with, like take it down. So it says, please remove it from all platforms, including social where it may still be visible. You are receiving this email because the Associated Press is now serving notice of video kills to customers via blah, 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 blah. But that doesn't mean that that's the royal family requesting that, right? No, so it was all the news outlets. But my favorite is that it says, the reason for killing the story, at closer inspection, it appears that the source has manipulated the image. Uh, no replacement photo will be sent. Okay, wait, that makes more sense then because the press realized it was fake. So they were like, let's stop fucking running this. But Catherine, quote unquote, left it up because they're the ones who posted it in the first place. They wanted people well, that to see was, it. So my response, I quote tweeted, it was like, correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't the family the source? Like that's kind of crazy is they're manipulating their own photo. And then she comes out with that statement. This was the weirdest damage control in my opinion. Cause one, I don't think it's believable that Kate Middleton was photoshopping her own picture. But then like, all you have to do to prove that it's not like some weird conspiracy is just un release the unedited one. It's not even about releasing the unedited one. Girl, it's 2024, as Alfredo Lewis told us in our last video. It's 2024, take a picture with your phone. Like literally just be like, hello everyone, it's Kate Middleton. Like, that's it. Why is this so complicated? I was talking to someone else, they're like, can't she just like go on that balcony that they go on and just be like, hello everyone, bye. Yeah. Like two seconds. They just wanna see so that you're alive. So what is the conclusion of this? Like what are people even thinking is happening? Why is she lying in their eyes? Or like, I guess, not even in their eyes. She is lying to a certain degree, but why? I don't know because there's people that are like royal enthusiasts that are like, maybe she just didn't like how she looked in the picture. I'm like, no, okay, that's weird. The theories otherwise are interesting, but first let's go to the picture that was released the following day, which was released by a bunch of UK press outlets before they wanted to respect her privacy. Now it appears they don't care, or it appears that they were instructed to release this photo. Do you see anything wrong with it? Uh, she's looking away, I guess. Well, that's a key component because we're not getting a full on like obvious picture of her, but more so, do you see the brick here and the brick here that are not the same type of brick? Yeah, the brick on the top looks dark and the bottom is giving German schmear, right? Or no? Yeah, maybe a faded German schmear. So it turns out there might be an explanation here as well. Um, I'm just gonna play this TikTok because she explains it and shows all the evidence. I believe I now have enough information to confirm one of the things about that Prince William and Catherine, Princess of Wales, pap shot on Monday. Here is the shot in question. Prince William was on his way to the Commonwealth Day service and we're told that Catherine was on her way to a private appointment. A person based in the UK reached out to me. They asked to remain anonymous, but that I could call them London girl. She reached out to me and said, 
I'm familiar with that area. She gave me the address of 39 Dorset High Street. And since there are many, many high streets in London, you will often see it referred to as Dorset Street on Google Maps. Here is Adelaide Cottage, which is the home of William and Kate. It's located on the Windsor Park grounds. Here is roughly where the paps took the photo. The paparazzi in question has spoken out. Yes, I know that this is the New York Post. And yes, I know that it's owned by Murdoch, but not everything is a conspiracy. He said the cars left Windsor Castle and I photographed them a short distance away on Datchet High Street outside number 39 to be precise. Goff Photos, which is the agency that captured the photo of William and Kate, spoke to E! News. They are quoted as saying that the pics have been cropped and lightened, but nothing has been doctored. One of the issues that people have noticed about the photo is that the brick up there is not the brick down here. The grout is different. The brick size is different. After the last couple of days, I do not blame people for focusing on this and thinking it is a fake shot. But here's what I think happened. It's 39 Datchet Street Slough, which is where the paparazzi said he was camped out for this photo. Here's right across the street. Look familiar? I think because the photo was cropped in so tight, we couldn't see that it was a brick wall and farther back was a brick building. An optical illusion of sorts. I think the difference in the color of bricks is explained because you're shooting through a car window in this situation. Even some of the black that you see on here and these black bricks, you can see here. Now this really could have been resolved by releasing the full pic before it was cropped. I think the shot was captured because either paparazzi were tipped off or they did want to get a shot of William on his way to the Commonwealth Day services, especially after all of this controversy. And they just happened to capture Kate. Do you agree after the past couple of days that seeing barely a quarter profile of Kate isn't enough for a lot of people? I'm not saying this video solves all of the mysteries, but I do think it solves this one. Yeah, so I guess it's... um. Maybe, I mean, it would have been one of the sloppiest Photoshop errors I've ever seen in my entire life. Like, how can you not just get the same brick? But um, yeah, this, this, I guess, makes more sense. There are some other theories that Kate is Photoshopped into the car, which I have looked into, and I can't say that it's not true, but I also can't say that it is true. And yeah, I still don't think she Photoshopped the picture, but the rest, I guess, does have good explanations. Anyway, back to us. If I had to guess why this was taking place, I would just assume divorce. That would be my only thought. But why would that mean she can't be seen? Because they don't like divorce? Or, or, I was talking to my mom about this actually, and she said that it kind of reminded her of being with my dad because they were the heads of their church. And my dad was like, when they knew they were getting divorced, was like, well, you have to go to church. And she was like, I am not going to church. Like, I am not putting on that show. Oh, like that Kate is not being She's not cooperating like, out of, with like, the royal spite. family anymore. That's what my mom thought. I could subscribe to that, sure. I like that theory better than some of the darker I, ones. I mean, I think you told me people think she's in a psych ward. People think she's dead. Like, yeah. I don't really believe that. I could believe more that she's put up with the royals shit for so long. And she's over her husband. She's over the yeah. royals. And she's like, fuck you all. And this is her way of doing that. Like, you want me to come out? Well, that's too damn bad. So get Charles to say something, bitch. Like, I'm not saying shit anymore. Which she has to be careful with. Because the royal family has a history of doing things to people that don't abide by their rules. And that's, the I think, the only reason why people are like extra entertaining the darker theories because it's like it's a very nefarious situation over there now then seeing how the news has been controlled and like what the uk is willing to release and stuff on twitter there's context that pops up when metro uk tweeted the same photo it says the image shown in this tweet is an older photo and not the photo that was taken today which is of the back of someone's head I don't even know what that means because I don't know that I haven't seen another photo of her supposedly leaving. And as if this wasn't all messy enough, the news outlets are definitely not helping. <laughs> First, there is Metro UK, who decided instead of tweeting out the picture of Kate and William in the car where Kate is turned away, the one that we were just looking at, they tweet out this. They decide that it is a good idea to tweet out this one where she's smiling and looks fine. Except for there's a problem. That's an old picture, which they don't include in the accompanying article. So instead, they decided, why not use this old picture of her? That'll be great. Except for that people um, did not think it was great. They were very angry. Eventually, they did swap it out. But yeah. And while we're on the topic of news outlets being dishonest, um, apparently at the end of January, there was a bit of a mix-up, you could say, at um, the Mirror. 
You know, one of the biggest news outlets in uh, the UK? Yeah. Well, on January 24th, they tweeted out this article that's titled, Kate, your best friend one minute and worst enemy the next, expert claims, along with a picture of Kate and William. The next day, though, the title had changed, and so did the picture associated with it, because now, on January 25th, it is titled, Prince Harry. Your best friend one minute and worst enemy the next, expert claims. Yes, that is the exact same title. They just swapped out the name and the picture, of course, because now it's a picture of Harry and Meghan. Their explanation for this came in uh, the form of an editor's note on the story, and it says, A previous version of this story erroneously referred to Kate, Princess of Wales, instead of Prince Harry. Hmm. Interesting. Um... What do you mean? This wasn't just like a casual mix up. I don't really even know what that explanation is supposed to mean because like, I, I'm pretty sure no one is confusing Kate with Harry. But anyway, um, it's not like this was just like the title that they screwed up. First of all, they had pictures to go with it. So that's already another layer. And the captions for the pictures read as follows. The January 24th one with Kate says, a royal expert claimed Kate and William have mood swings. So because this was just like a big mix up and they meant to write Harry, you would think that it would say that Harry has mood swings because uh, remember, it, it was just a mix up. They meant to say Harry, they just said Kate and William apparently. But no, no, if you look at the caption for Harry's picture on the edited article, it says, Prince Harry is a lot like his mother, one royal expert has claimed. So when you say erroneously referred to Harry as Kate, do you mean an entirely separate article? Because that's what happened. In fact, uh, the Twitter thread that I found this on, someone had put in the replies a screenshot of the original article, which let's just say it wasn't just a name mishap because it reads as follows. It also claimed William has a notably short fuse. A close royal aide was also said to have revealed to Jobson he can be a bit of a shouter when he loses it. However, the aide added, it's fair to say that the Duke and Duchess give as good as they get if their disagreement results in raised voices. But they know each other so well, it usually blows over quickly. And she is, on the whole, a major calming influence on him. Hmm. Call me crazy, but that doesn't sound like it's about Harry. So I'm... Still confused. Erroneously referred to Kate instead of Harry is insane. No, no, you had literally a separate article about different people and the articles are specific to the different people and you change the whole thing and then you're just gonna be like, oop, editor's note, classic mix up. I don't understand. And you might be thinking, what's the significance here? And to that I say, honestly, I don't really know. But my theory is that maybe since this was end of January, this was after Kate's surgery. So I was thinking maybe because this was a UK outlet, they had been fed the story by the Royals because they control the news. And it was like a pre-planned thing that had already been set in motion. And then maybe if Kate's surgery potentially was not planned, and then they forgot this article was coming out. And then they kind of panic because they didn't want to draw any attention to any like marital problems between William and Kate. So they just switch it up and decide, oh, let's just go after Harry and Meghan like we always do. Otherwise, I really couldn't tell you. So that's my guess. Anyway, back to us. I swear this was the last one. Don't worry. Definitely there's too many coincidences. It's not one picture or one thing where yeah. I'm just like, okay, Lily, I don't really see this. Like it is manipulated enough where it's like, uh. And it's the series of events that have like led everyone to be more suspicious as each thing comes out and then they keep finding things. And then it's like, the press won't run some pictures. They will run other pictures. And it's just like, everyone just wants to know yeah. what the fuck is going on. And honestly, I hope she's safe. I honestly hope it's just like a slay divorce where she's just like, I'm leaving bitch. And I'm not, you know, I'm not dealing with none of you fuckers anymore. If it's that, then good, she's safe. And if it's not, then what the fuck is going on? The royal family is kind of the epitome of all those shows and stuff that you watch that you're like, oh, none of that shit could really be going on. You know what I mean? Where you're just like- But like it, it could be. Yeah, they're very much where it could be going on because of their thirst for power and they're weird, not eugenics, but like, what what are the, what do you call them? Like they're- Kind right? of, yeah. Don't they kind of play no, into that? I think that applies. So yeah. it's like their weird control for their family and their bloodline and their power. It's just, it's all very strange and it's all very dark. I applaud Megan and Harry for getting the fuck out of there. And if it's Kate getting the fuck out of there too, if that's what this is, then you know what? Go for it. Like, I don't know. I just hope it's not 
something weirder. It's just hard not to like go to that place because yeah. it's weird. It's like, just step out and tell us you're okay, girl. Get on Snapchat. Go on Austin McBroom Snapchat, girl. I'll watch you anywhere. Like, just let us know yeah, you're fine. on Snapchat. If you don't know, because like I wouldn't have known, that is why everyone's talking about Kate Middleton. We don't know what the fuck is going on. And I just hope it's not something darker than what people are speculating. And that's been my main thing is like, I don't really have any kind of strong theory or opinions towards any of it. I just am not stupid and I can tell that there's something right. And when going on. people get told like, oh, no, no, what you're looking at is not what you're looking at. It just like, I don't know, incites people even more to get more curious. And so now the conversation's out of control. Honestly, it does give me a lot of, uh, it reminds me a lot of Britney Spears. It does. Yeah. A lot of people thought that was insane and could never be true. And it was. But anyway, um, that's our super long, like Kate Middleton, this is what's going on section. So hopefully if you didn't know, now you know. And I don't know, let us know in the comments below what you think. But I'm kind of scared to ask that because I feel like people are getting to weird places with it, you know? But I mean, let us know what you think below as always. But anyway, we'll jump into our last topic. It is is going to be a short one, but it's going to be an infuriating one. So strap in. Should we put out a trigger warning? Yeah, we probably should. So trigger warning. Animal yeah, cruelty. Animal cruelty, animal abuse. And just, we're not going to show that. I would never show that on the show. So just know that. But we are going to show an animal that is like kind of skin and bones type of situation where they're starved and they were malnourished. And that's about the extent of the abuse that you'll see. But we need to talk about it for a very specific reason. So what I'm going to do is show you this in a particular order. And that order order is showing you this TikTok by someone called Michaela and Lila is the TikTok account. And they posted this TikTok after they found a dog on the street. So this has music, but I'll read the captions. So this is a pit bull or like bully breed mix, I think is what they call them. And he's like gray and white, literally so skinny you could see his ribs. And the caption says, this poor boy was starving, scared and alone on a construction site. You could see every bone in his fragile body and he's eating because they gave him food. He was so hungry. He has bad skin infection, lots of missing fur, scabs, lumps, and bumps. He has a microchip, which was registered in a city two hours away. Even though this is a very popular dumping road, we are praying he is just very very lost and we can find his owners. Either way, the sweetheart is safe and will never see another day of suffering. And he is so cute. He's literally so cute. So that's all they knew. They found a dog on a construction site. They knew that he was microchipped, but that was it. Well, they found who the owner was and girlies, do we know them? Unfortunately, we do. Not personally. No, oh, thank God. So yesterday I was involved in a pretty crazy rescue mission and it has seemed to have just gotten crazier and crazier. So I received a call about this gray and white bully breed mix that had been dropped off at a construction site. He was clearly very malnourished. Um, he was probably close to starving and with the amount of coyotes that we have in our area, he probably would not have made it through the night. Uh, the microchip company is usually not able to tell us much information. They were able to tell me that they did have contact information for the owner. They were also able to tell me two things. The dog was chipped out of Whitesboro, Texas, and the dog was chipped at Stucky Animal Clinic. Thankfully, I am with the rescue, so I was able to get a little bit more information, um, and the legal owner's name was Brittany Dawn Davis. I was also able to talk to Dr. Stucky, who did confirm that this is the legal owner of the dog whose name is Nico. Um, he also did confirm that Brittany Dawn Davis worked for him several years ago as a vet tech. She, at St she works for him? Okay, so Brittany Dawn Davis, let's go back and talk about our friend. Good friend, not a friend at all. She can go away. First, I do want to pose the question, what does she mean that like they don't release information? Isn't that the whole point of having a microchip is so you can reunite the dog with the owner? I don't know if she means they don't release information or they don't have information because you'd be surprised how many dogs are microchipped and when they scan it, it doesn't really like give any valid information when i got max he already had one and they were like yeah you just need to register so yes like i did because otherwise i'm like the contact information no shit they give it to you because what are you supposed to do otherwise Brittany dawn davis is yes. Yes. Uh, someone we've talked about on the show a few times or maybe one time i can't be sure but if you don't know her she is that woman that infamously got sued by the state of texas because she sold 
nutrition plans, quote unquote, to people that were personalized and a ton of people bought them. And I believe she either never delivered them or they were not personalized at all when she did deliver them. I think she just didn't even deliver them. I think most of them she didn't and that's why the actual state got involved. But after that happened, she kind of made this pivot to like religious, not problematic, uh, just like I am just one with the universe and God and all that stuff. Yeah, that pipeline, whatever the fuck that is. And we talked about her because a video came out where she was like sobbing, talking about how her dogs got away. They were puppies, I believe. Two of them got away when she was going to run to the store with her husband. And when she came back, one of them had been hit by a car. I forgot that this was that. Yes, that's her. Instead of, you know, as a vet tech, because we talked about this, that she was a vet tech or she had been in the past. She had experience. Yeah, yeah. Rather than taking that animal and saying, oh my God, let me take it straight to the vet and see if they could do anything. Her husband decided, no, no, he's beyond the point of any help. And he shot the dog and killed him right there on their property. Okay. And she talked about it like, you know, he did what he had to do. Uh, did he? Like you could have either just held that dog if you really thought that there was no other help. Just held that dog if that was his last like seconds to live. And if it wasn't his last seconds or minutes to live, then that could have been enough time to take him to a vet. Like it's just fucking ridiculous. So we talked about that. We were infuriated by that, obviously. And she's part of the group of like weird cookie cutter influencers whose husband or significant others kill their animals. Um, who's the other one? Nikki Philippi. That's the other one. That one was weird. That one was weird. But that's what makes this even crazier because you have this history of not only being a liar and a scammer, allegedly, or was that confirmed by now? I, I don't know. But you've also been rumored to be a really shit pet parent because it was your fault that those dogs got out and then you shot them dead. Like it, it was wasn't just very it not weird. even that they got out. Wasn't the whole thing because people were bitching at us afterwards, I remember, because we were talking about cats and dogs and they're like, cats kind of sometimes like get out and like you can't really keep them in. If they want to be outside, then they will find ways. Still try and keep your cats inside. But we were like, there's not outdoor dogs. And people were like, no, I live in the country and there there is. And it was kind of like a situation where it was like, they didn't get out. She just like let them roam around. I honestly don't remember. I would have to rewatch that because I don't remember the circumstances. But even if your dog is an outdoor dog 24 seven, okay, if that's the choice you make and you live in the country and whatever, fine. But if that dog gets hit by a car, I do still feel like that's on you. Like you have a fucking, like why have an outdoor yep. animal and then be like, oh my God, he got hit by a dog. Yeah, there's fucking cars outside. I feel like there's also a difference between the country. Like if we're talking, you have 14 acres of land or something like that. Yeah. And a neighborhood like mine where it's like backyard to backyard. And I do think that's what she had, something similar to that. I have no idea where she lives, but personally, in my opinion, don't let your dog roam around anywhere where they could accidentally get hit by a car. And then it's your car. But whatever, that's neither here nor there. That is why we were talking about her. We were annoyed with that whole situation. We were obviously really upset. Like that just seems like a really horrifying situation. But now cut to this, where like a year later, it's found that this dog that is so severely malnourished, and I mean that top picture of him where it like you see his skeleton is so foul. I'm surprised he was able to be walking like that. Right. Yeah. He was very, very close to death. For him to be microchipped to Brittany Dawn is so fucking insane. So I'm going to explain how this happened and how Nico, which is his name, got from being Brittany Dawn's little Instagram puppy, where she literally made an Instagram account for him that was like, my mom's Brittany Davis, and it was Nico the puppy or whatever the fuck. Like, she made a whole cookie cutter fucking account, and she posed with him for Instagram pictures, and it was this sweet little thing. How he got from that to the fucking streets. Here is a picture of her with Nico. It has been alleged. I have not been able to find it. Maybe Lily with her FBI, you know, skills will be able to find it. But people have said that Brittany Dawn mentioned in a video that she wasn't vibing with the dog and that is what Michaela says as well like oh she said she wasn't vibing with the dog and that's why she wanted to rehome him I don't know the logistics of it but what actually happened is that Brittany Dawn decided one day that she was gonna rehome this dog and she originally went through a shelter to do this the proper way. And when it had passed five days and the shelter had not yet found an owner, they saw a Facebook post. This is all the shelter saying this, right? They found a Facebook post from Brittany saying she had already rehomed the dog. And I'll actually show you because Dad Challenge Podcast actually 
asked Michaela a few questions. And I know a lot of our viewers are like iffy on Dad Challenge podcast. I'm not like promoting him or anything. It's just he got this kind of like text interview with her. And he's kind of saying, yeah, he's just, you know, he's a lot and could be a little misogynistic and, you know, intense. So I understand. But whatever. He's the one who got the interview with her. So I'm going to show him saying what she answered because it does kind of clear up a lot of the like in-betweens that got a little lost here. Be a bunch of messages that I'm allowed to, she said I'm allowed to read. Um, I'm not going to read, I'm not going to read the screen. Like, I'm not going to show you the screenshots here, but, uh, basically I talked to the trainer that had him for boarding training at the time. He said that Brittany basically left her dog at the trainers for five, five years ago and said she couldn't take him back. She apparently lived in a condo and was super high energy and needed much more activity and stimulation that she was willing to give him. Isn't she a fitness person? Are you serious? She was in the middle of a class action lawsuit for defrauding people for fake fitness nutrition plans, and she basically stole from other trainers. He goes on to say, and he said he's not showing the screenshots, but that these are messages between him and Michaela, and that she had conversations with her old vet office, her old dog trainers, rescues that were along the Brittany's? way, like everybody. Yeah, uh, Michaela. Michaela had the conversation with Brittany's old vet. Yes, she talked to basically everyone in Brittany's life. I think she even ended up talking to Brittany. I'm not 100% sure on that, but she's sharing all the information with Josh here. So basically what he goes on to say is that the people that picked up Nico were a couple that came in like a beat up Mustang. And it was like just a situation where they came off of Craigslist. That's what people are alleging. And that's what Michaela said she verified. Came, got the dog, and then came back to Brittany like the next day and said, hey, my son is scared of that dog. Like we can't take him. Which, uh, maybe do some research. I really hate when people get animals Maybe like have the son meet the dog first and make sure he's okay with you getting a dog. But yeah. Yes. And so then Brittany went back to this boarding school slash trainer whom she apparently left this dog with for a year. And she did that because he was too active and she couldn't take care of him, which is why he was making fun of her. But then this is what the trainer said. The trainer told Brittany it was her dog and he was not getting involved in keeping the dog any longer, helping to rehome him. That's the last he heard. They actually emailed Michaela and said, this is awful. Back in 2019, we tried to help Brittany with rehoming Nico safely. However, five days after she registered, we saw a post about her finding him a home. Rumor has it she rehomed him on Craigslist. I have no idea if this is the truth or not, but something I was told when I started to look into this today. We have an email dating back May 6, 2019, where we asked her for an update if he had found a home and she stopped replying to us. Please let us know if there's anything we could do to help. We would be more than happy to get you guys some resources for his care and also help safely rehome him when he's ready. Thank you so much for helping him. Jesus. So she gave him to this couple. They didn't want him anymore. And then no one knows what happened after that. Yeah. So it seems like she went back to the trainer whom she had relied on for basically dealing with him because she didn't want to. And then when they said that they didn't want to help, maybe she told those people like, nah, you got to keep them. I'm not sure. And maybe that's how he got dumped. Nobody knows. But whoever became the new owners did not like register themselves on the microchip. They didn't obviously care for him. They dumped him. And I don't know how long it would take a dog to go from being healthy, like in the pictures with Britain to that kind of state and especially because it's like two hours away from where she's from he could have been on the streets for a year like it, it seems completely plausible and it's kind of a miracle he's not dead yeah but 2019 is five years ago so like what oh my god that is five years ago maybe he was in and out of shelters or something like I, I wonder where was he in the meantime I have no fucking clue well that's the thing is that Brittany was so far removed from helping him or doing any fucking thing and so nobody really knows like in his in-between other than who she tried to give the dog to but it very much seemed like especially because she tried to get the help from the shelter first and then just went to like okay whoever fucking wants him like if you guys aren't gonna get rid of him she had somewhere that took him that she didn't have to deal with it anymore yeah and since she stopped replying and didn't even let the shelter know like yeah he got a great home with a great family or anything it's very clear she just didn't give a fuck she just wanted him gone this is giving the exact same energy as the logan paul pig situation okay yeah i was thinking of the same thing yeah a pig though and it's super fucking wrong and that was awful but it's like a pig i could see someone who's just fucking dumb and just being like oh a pig like that's not gonna be that hard to take care of a dog you know what you're getting into a dog you do and especially you're getting a bully breed mix or whatever like are you actually dumb you think that they are not active creatures that need i don't know it just pisses me off so bad and especially with our history i was like literally jaw dropped to the floor when he said it was registered to Brittany Dawn. I'm like, no, no, there's no fucking way. That cannot be true. So in my eyes, this woman is so horrendous. Like just her the history fact alone. The that she worked like, at a vet is mind blowing. I just don't get how someone could do that. Genuinely. And so I went to her Instagram and I have some fun 
pictures and videos on my phone that I'll send to Lily from her story today. She's on a snow trip with the girlies. So she's just having a good time. She has not addressed shit. She's just having a good time. Yeah, she just seems honestly, and I'm not even trying to be mean, just like, is there anything good that's come out about that woman? Like everything seems so depraved and not just bad, but it's like- One very girl. selfish. Selfish, you're lying. You literally cannot convince me that you are this wonderful person. Like she had a Instagram video that was like, just pray about it. You don't need to explain it to anyone. You don't need to explain anything. You know, just pray to well, God or whatever. other people though, you, you do. I was literally like, that is so convenient. You don't have to explain anything, do you? Just leave it up to God. Like, girl, sometimes you do have to explain things when you fucking hurt people, but she very much gives that energy of like, why are people hating on me? It's like, girl, you actually like committed fraud and scams and like murdered a dog. You took people's money because you needed money and you didn't care about whether or not they were spending their money or not. Didn't matter what happened to them. Then you kill a dog because you don't probably want to go to the vet. It just seems like all of her decisions are very selfishly motivated. Oh yeah, for sure. But um, that's pretty much it. That's all we know right now. If there's an update, we'll let you know. But I had to share that. I could not keep that in. I was like, do we know them? Fuck yeah. Like what? I cannot believe that. And we said this, I think with Logan Paul and the pig too, which like that one, yes. Like he claimed he didn't know. He thought that the pig was still like living at this farm that he left at, which like, sure, it's not directly his fault, but- I think our biggest takeaway was I would be so clear if I was rehoming an animal that if there was any circumstance in which that dog was then suddenly going to not have that home that I rehomed him at, call me immediately because then it feels like it still should be your responsibility to make sure Absolutely. that that dog is okay. When we mentioned that story with Toby, I did that with a dog that was a stray to begin with. And I was like, yeah. I don't care. I don't want him on the streets or euthanized. Like, are you joking? It's just really, really sad that people don't give a shit about anything like she very much seems like one of the most selfish influencers I think I've ever seen and that's saying a lot because there's a lot of them but like she just seems so self-absorbed and like when it comes to being selfish because like you want money or you want fame that's a different thing when it becomes you're so selfish you don't care if something lives or dies like uh-uh mm -mm, I can't I, that sounds that. like more of like a narcissistic personality situation where it's like you are putting yourself like your comfort above everything else yeah anyway that's pretty much it i am sorry to upset you girlies so much but that is where i will leave you that is what Brittany dawn is up to because no one asked i think i had a different um we love the internet but i feel like i'm gonna change it now to be one that i've kind of said to you off camera several times but never chosen to actually show because i didn't know what video to pick but um dave portnoy who oh God. i'll say right now i've never been a fan i he seems like an asshole but oh my God, he has adopted this dog. And I'm sure if you're on TikTok, you've seen it because Miss Peaches is very famous now. Mm -hmm. But Miss Peaches is this pit bull. She's like six years old and he rescued her from a animal rescue. And apparently he made a Miss Peaches sweatshirt or shirt or something. And I think he's raised over $250,000 for this rescue. And I'm pretty sure it's like a pit bull rescue specifically. I've seen the first video that he ever got. I feel like I've seen all of them since, but he gets this dog and she is very timid. Watching the last couple months, everyone in the comments, it's funny because Miss Peaches has gotten Dave a whole new fan base because before like he seemed like an asshole. And now everyone's like, oh my God, do I like Dave Portnoy now? And let me just pick a couple. Here's him walking her. It says, Miss Peaches loves walking now. <laughs> I feel like some people are like, oh, they look so happy. This dog looks like she's just living her dreams. Like she didn't even know how to walk downstairs at first. And now she's just like, here's one where she's eating Carbone. What's Carbone? A fancy restaurant. Oh my gosh. Because apparently it's just like always wags her tail. Every time she sees him, she is just thrilled. Miss Peaches, I'm not gonna go to Carbone and eat fine dining. They literally brought this said, this is for Miss Peaches. <laughs> the fact that her name is Miss Peaches cracks me up. Hey, Miss Peaches, on the couch? Where are you going, Miss Peaches? Miss Peaches, that's a veal, a veal parmesan bone, Miss Peaches. Don't get it on the white couch, please, Miss Just Peaches. living her dreams. That is a good juxtaposition uh, from what we just spoke about. Yeah, so well, especially that. with pit bulls because they do get really just like yeah. discarded, yeah. like they don't matter. And like watching her go from like not being able to walk upstairs and scared of everything to this. That's awesome. Well, anyway, that is where we will leave you guys today. Weird episode, but I hope you liked it nonetheless. And if you made it to the end, as always, we very much appreciate you. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. And as always, we will see you on Monday. Bye. Cheers.